The state visit between uh, Japan and the UK will take place next week. And what tiaras can we expect to see on Queen Camilla, Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, and will Catherine up here? I have some thoughts on this because the Japanese visit is going to be kind of special because in Japan, all of their tiaras only feature diamonds, white gold, really, and pearls no colored jewels. In fact, it's very rare for any of the Japanese royals to wear colored jewels. And so we won't really expect to see any of that on our royal ladies. And especially when it comes to Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, besides her wedding tiara, she doesn't really have a full diamond piece to choose from. So could we see something new on Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh? I have some thoughts. So we are going to go in this today. And this is Tiara Thursday, even though it's Friday, it's a TR Thursday. We're actually moving the program from Tuesday to Thursday for something else I'm doing on the main Royal News Network channel. So I am so excited to get this video out to you because last time I should have done a video on the tiaras the Duchess of Westminster could have chosen from. And I ended up not doing that. And I wish I had, and I waited till later. It was probably wasn't good. So this time though, guys, I have some thoughts on what we might, might see from our Royal ladies. And so we are going to go in this today, but if you guys haven't been to Royal Fashion News, my name is Brittany and I have a passion for Royal Fashion. So if you like all things that glitter and the gorgeous Royal Fashion that we see all the time, feel free to give a subscribe. I would love to have you guys back. And so let's get into it. Although I did forget to add guys that Empress Masako, I will tell you guys a couple of options that I foresee for her as well. Cause there's really kind of two big ones, the biggest ones within the Japanese collection. And I don't know much about the Japanese collection. So I had a fun time doing a bit of research into it. So the first one I want to suggest, and I, I went with ones that we haven't seen Queen Camilla in yet. Obviously we've seen the girls of Great Britain and Ireland. We've seen the Burmese Ruby TR. We've seen the Belgian Sapphire, but all the colored stone ones are out. So there's a couple ones I'm thinking of. First one would be Queen Adelaide's Diamond Fringe Tiara. And this one is very much a long shot. And so this was commissioned by Queen Adelaide, wife of King William IV in 1831 and was made by Rundell and Bridge. And it has actually been worn by Queen Victoria and is actually featured in a portrait of Victoria. It has very much this halo effect. And it was one of the first tiaras she wore as queen to the theater in November of 18. 37. So we are going way back in time. And it was included in an inventory of Queen Victoria in 1858 and 1896. Reportedly, though, the diamonds are even older than that, having belonged to King George III. And if you might remember, King George is the king who lost the United States of America. Actually, I actually have a coin with King George III on it that I got in the UK around Hampton Court Palace. I was super excited about that because I kind of like old coins too. And it was described as a necklace with a fringe pattern set with brilliance. And it can also be obviously arranged as a tiara. And Victoria also wore this in 1851 on the 1st of May for the Victoria and Prince Albert's Great Exhibition. So this has quite the historic connections here. It consists of 133 sections using 1,456 brilliance. And it did end up losing two of those sections at some point. So now it's only down to 131 sections. Queen Mary reframed the necklace as a tiara again. And then Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, then also made it into a necklace. And it has been worn by Queen Elizabeth II in 2002. But Queen Elizabeth just didn't really bust this one out. We really didn't even see this one from Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, a lot either. And so this tiara and necklace really has been sort of hidden within the vault. So I would love to see Camilla bust this out. She's busted out a couple of things so far that we've seen that haven't been in the public eye really much at all because there was a stomacher that she wore recently. I think sometime, it, I think it was for the state visit earlier last year and nobody knew what it was. Everybody was trying to figure out where, where did this come from? Where did this come from? Looks like something else from the Grenville collection. So I'm really hoping that Camilla is somebody who is interested in showing us some more of these historic pieces. Now, the other option is Queen Alexandra's Kokoschnik tiara. So this was designed and modeled after Empress Maria Fedorova Kokoschnik tiara, and she was the sister of Queen Alexander, and it was given to her on her 25th wedding anniversary in 1888 by the Ladies of Society. It was worn frequently by Alexandra and then eventually by Queen Mary as well. 
It featured 77 fringe pieces and packed with 400 diamonds and at the time cost 4,400 pounds. Now, this is according to the Sydney Morning Herald. This, this came from the court jeweler, and this is actually way back when the tiara was presented. It said, the diamond tiara, which the ladies of England presented to the Princess of Wales, which Alexander was at the time, and which is an exact copy of one possessed by her sister, the Empress of Russia, is not a particularly beautiful object. It is oval in shape, and it can be worn either on the head or around the neck. It is composed of a series of straight spikes, the longest being in front and the sides diminishing towards the back. Each spike consists of some six or eight diamonds, the stones being of good quality and those in the front large size. It has been adjusted by Gerards with 16 of the smaller diamond bars removed. And the tiara itself is made up now of 61 graduated bars with 488 diamonds. And what's interesting about this one is that this one was not only worn by members of the British Royal family, particularly the Queens, but also by Queen Louise of Denmark, who was lent this tiara by Alexandra, who was her daughter, and she wore this tiara in the 1890s. It's been one of the tiaras that Queen Elizabeth has worn most consistently. And it was actually worn, I got two videos, each from a former Japanese state visit. And in both of those videos, one, she is wearing this particular tiara. And the next one she is wearing is a Vladimir tiara, which is the other suggestion I have with the pearl configuration. So this definitely wouldn't be the emeralds, it'd be the pearls again, because the Japanese don't utilize colored jewels in their tiaras. And so this tiara survived the Russian Revolution famously, and it was hidden in a safe that belonged to Duchess Marie Mecklenburg Sherwin. And it was hidden within her bedroom, the safe. And she was married to Grand Duke of Vladimir Zandrovich of Russia. Russia. And so this tiara, because they had escaped before the revolution really happened, was secured via a rather daring escape. A couple of people who were commissioned by the Duchess to go in, grab the tiara and other jewels and smuggle them out of Russia. And they were actually successful in that endeavor. I have a video more on that if you guys want to click the link up above. And it was damaged in this transport or might have been damaged before. I don't think we're really all that sure, but it was eventually sold to Queen Mary who paid for the repairs to this tiara. So started off life with the pearls, and then the emeralds were added later by Queen Mary from the Cambridge Emeralds collection. And so I am so excited that we might see a couple of these. So for Camilla, I, I really lean towards the two options being the Kokoshnik or the Vladimir. Those are my two options, strong, strong options for Camilla. I, I think the Adelaide one is a little bit out of sorts, but I think the Kokoshnik and the Vladimir are going to be the two best options for Camilla, especially since Queen Elizabeth has previously worn these with state visits from Japan. So when it comes to Catherine, the Princess of Wales, if she was to attend, I don't think we'd see her in anything new. I think it would be either the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot, the Strathmore Rose, the Lotus Flower, one of those if she did attend. Now, if she's dealing with maybe headaches from her condition or anything like that, she'd go for something much lighter. So probably the Strathmore Rose, which I would imagine is very light. It'd actually be kind of cool to see her on the Adelaide fringe. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. And when it comes to Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, here's what's interesting. The two most common tiaras that she wears is the aquamarine necklace one that she has that was, I believe, made for her. And this other one that has sort of these like five aquamarines in this interesting pattern. And then the other tiara she has, obviously, is her wedding tiara, which was something that was made out of a piece of jewelry belonging to Queen Victoria. Now, many people don't particularly like this tiara, and I think it's been a while since we've seen her wear it. But what's interesting is that because it is her 25th wedding anniversary just earlier this week, it may be an opportunity to upgrade that particular tiara. So I could see a future, especially because she's been such an asset to the monarchy. That's a time to sort of elevate this tiara, add more diamonds, add more flash, add something. But the other option that I foresee, maybe, just maybe, for Sophie the Duchess of Edinburgh, the Queen of Mary's Bandeau tiara, which Meghan Markle famously wore to her wedding. I think it's a low profile tiara, very much fitting with somebody further down the line of succession. And so I could definitely see that being one of Sophie's options. Now, while Anne has a couple of options for tiaras as well, like the Meander tiara, she has her own tiara that she was given, the Festoon. And I think one other might be an option. She doesn't really have the same, I could say, interest as Sophie does because Sophie's main tiaras have colored stone, whereas all of Anne's tiaras are just diamonds. So again, Sophie is an interesting outlier here. And I think we may see Camilla in something new because she's not going to wear the Orient Circlet tiara or something like that. She's going to wear something all diamonds. Now, she could wear the Girls of Great Britain in Ireland. 
hundred percent a chance of that, but I'm really hoping she busts out something new. <laughs> that is my hope. Now, when it comes to the Empress of Japan, Masako, I don't know that much about the history of tiaras in Japan, but I did look a little bit into it. And as I was doing my research, guys, I found out that the first time a Japanese emperor ever left Japan was for a visit to the United States in 1971. So really when it comes to Japan, state visits are a relatively newish phenomenon for them. Yes, the crown prince, I think it was Hirohito, did go to London when he was still crown prince. But once he became emperor, it wasn't until 1971 that he traveled so now moving on to what Masako, Empress Masako might wear. One of the first questions I know many people are asking are, why do they only prefer white tiaras? Basically, tiaras that only contain white gemstones, which basically means diamonds or pearls. And the answer is, I don't really know. I tried to look it up. I couldn't really find a good answer. I'm so sorry. White in Japan just generally does mean purity. And I can imagine given how strict the Japanese households are. And so when it comes to royal life, like the last family I'd probably want to marry into ever would be Japan. It's just kind of a brutal system on the women. It's just not very comforting. Basically, all the empresses have had a nervous breakdown at some point, including Masako. Actually, one of Masako's best friends is Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. So as I was looking through, I found this really sweet video of them greeting each other during the enthronement of Emperor Naruhito. That's Masako's husband. And so there is just a very, very strict, just very regimented thing within the Japanese imperial system. And you'll notice as well, the women are all prim and proper. You know, they straight backs and they have the fans and like this is like very 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 structured very i would say step forward wife ish and i just wouldn't use that term often or frequently but it does definitely fit when it comes to the japanese so i think there's really two tiaras that we can anticipate from masako and she has worn one and that first one is the meiji tiara which is reserved for the empress it was made in the late 19th century most likely by a european jeweler which was apparently Chomet is what I saw in one article about it. Empress Haruko was the first to wear the tiara in 1887 as the imperial family adopted a more Western style of dress. So this is as sort of the integration was coming in. The Meiji era was sort of the transition between the very conservative era before. Let's see, eras of Japan. Let's look it up real quick so I know what I'm actually talking about. So the time before the Meiji era was the Togugaka era. And this was sort of before as the Western influences were sort of coming in or trying to get in around that time it was really the Meiji era where all of a sudden they were introduced. Japan was to just all this new technology, all these Western ideas that they just didn't really have before. And so she, so they began to adopt more of this Western style, especially as they were trying to trade and do different things within their various European partners, allies, those sorts of things. And so this particular tiara has two toppers of either large round diamonds or stars, which was in reaction to the popularity of those by CC of Austria at the time. And I forgot about this. So hold on one second. So guys, when I was last in Europe, we went to Austria and it was part of one of the trips together with my followers. So if you're ever interested in one of those, I do have one upcoming to Christmas markets in Germany and the Czech Republic, which I'm so excited for. We're going to be in Berlin, Dresden. And Prague. And Prague, I've heard, is gorgeous. And I can't wait to go to Berlin and Dresden. The World War II nerd in me is, like, so excited. So, anyways, I actually got those because Empress Assisi was sort of famous for this portrait of her where she had really, really long hair cascading down. And she had these star barrettes in her hair. And obviously, those are diamonds. And these are not. But these are very cute. So, I would meant to wear these the whole time so I could point them out. And then I totally forgot. So we are putting them in now. And so Empress Asadako was the next to adopt tiaras. And so she wore this one. Empress Nagako wore this tiara and used all three settings. So either without the toppers, with the round diamond ones, with the star ones. Empress Michiko wore this tiara as well, but without the stars. So if Empress Masako wore it, she has before with the round diamonds on tops. I'm hoping she wears it this time with the stars. That is my personal, like, 
recommendation, please do that. It's wearing the one with the stars, please. And so the next one is the Imperial Chrysanthemum Tiara because the crown of Japan is kind of known as the Chrysanthemum Throne. And so this tiara has 16 petaled chrysanthemum flowers, which is an imperial symbol, basically, of the family. The tiara is for the exclusive use of the empress and is often worn at diplomatic occasions. And it was a favorite as well of Empress Nagako. So I'm really hoping that maybe we even see that one on our new empress because I think that would be absolutely amazing. Again, when it comes to these state visits, it's an opportunity to share messages through your tiaras. I think what I looked last time, I'll have to look at my videos again. I can't remember. I think both of them have been worn. I think last time it might have been the chrysanthemum tiara was worn at the most recent state visit or one of the recent state visits between the UK and Japan. Because basically as every monarch changes at some point, they sort of make the rounds and visit everyone. And so we shall see new vi state visits, of course, from Denmark because we just have a new king and queen there. And we will see more people come to visit them too. So guys, that is it for this video. Let me know what you think of my predictions. What is the tiara you would like to see? And do you think Catherine will attend? you think Sophie will get a new tiara she hasn't worn before? Will Camilla bust out something else from the vault we haven't seen her in yet? I would love to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye. We don't count the carrots. We count the centuries.